Welcome to the Read Suite Champion Series. I'm here with Paul Carpinella, Senior Director of Growth Marketing at Visit. Visit is revolutionizing the way brands are communicating with their customers through AI-powered image testing, enabling them to test their images against consumer audiences in real time. All right, let's get into it. Paul, thanks for making time for us. Uh, the first question we have for you is who you are, what do you do, and what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Yeah, so I'm uh, Paul Carpinella, uh, Senior Director of Growth Marketing here at Visit. So have over uh, 20 years at this point, which is weird to say, of uh, marketing experience predominantly uh, at this point um, in the B2B tech space uh, and over the past eight years, uh, specifically within the e-commerce space. So I feel like I've actually grown with the industry, which has been which has been fun. Ice cream flavor, it's um, mint chocolate chip with uh, chocolate sprinkles and it has to be the artificially flavor or the artificially colored blue mint chocolate chip. I, I don't know why I don't like the natural one. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, I, was, I was actually, just, I had ice cream on the weekend and I had, it's like guava donut and cheese ice cream oh. and it blew my mind. Really? Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're near salt and straw, I don't know if that's up to date where you guys are right now, but yeah. that was one of the best ice cream players I think I've ever had in my entire life. Like little oh, chunks okay. of like frozen donut in there as well. It was oh. next level. I'm a little chicken on my ice cream, but I might have to try it. I might be adventurous one night. I know. You know. I was like, I wasn't sure. I was like, I'll, I'll have a little taster. And I taste them. Like, this is like a beautiful combination of heaven <laughs> right now. Um. All right. So the thank you for that. And like the next big uh, question we have for you is, what business problem did you want to solve with Resuite? And why was this problem important to visit? Yeah, so I think initially, we're, we're really what we're trying to solve is um, improving the conversion rates on our uh, business development reps outreach programs. Um, really, we wanted to be able to break above the noise and offer some way to have a two-way communication or two-way, um, you know, kind of way of work between our prospects and our business development reps. And we thought, you know, certainly give them an opportunity to um, play and touch and feel, so to speak, our software um, it would be a good way to be able to do that. Amazing. That's really good to hear. And are there any lean indicators at this point of going that direction? Um, you know, we have seen um, open rates uh, and click rates certainly doubling um, through these campaigns. And we're certainly hoping, you know, that we'll, we'll be able to bag some meetings as we kind of move further into this and, and quicken those sales cycles. Awesome. And then kind of the big last question for us is like, Closing thoughts on how you intend on expanding your adoption of demo animation in the future, and just in general, maybe some thoughts on the buyer's journey or buyer enablement at a macro level going forward as well. Sure. So, from a visit perspective, we really want to start looking and leveraging this uh, this tool uh, at all stages of the funnel. So, really looking at what is that buyer's journey at after they go from meeting the opportunity when they're in opportunity going down to the buying uh, the buying committee cycle and really have an experience that would enable them to best champion our software across the across their kind of buying journey, but then also be feel very comfortable uh, once they're actually buying it that they know they're going to get value on it. Um, we're also looking to you know leverage this with customers as well, really give them an opportunity to um, play with potential new features uh, that they might be able to to use with Visit, but not necessarily in their own environment. So it's a kind of a fail safe uh, testing for them where they're able to, you know, try new things, click new buttons, but not necessarily creating, um, you know, some some extra projects and, and things like that within their environments. I think in general, um, the B2B buyer's journey, you know, I think it's probably, you know, I, I'm sure like every year we, we, we hear it's tougher than ever, right? So I will give the obligatory, it's tougher than ever, but <laughs> When you think about it, there are just tons and tons more of point solutions popping up every day, which, you know, have very similar commoditized value propositions and maybe just have one or two different ways of work. And they're all doing a, a ton of different, you know, different but similar thought leadership and demand gen plays. So it's incredibly noisy out there. And I, I definitely feel for them. Um, and I think there's certainly a lot more, um, as always, a lot more justification there. Like, I think there's ability... Um, through telling good stories and really enabling your prospect champion to help really drive sales forward. But I, I still think end of the day, um, you know, there's still going to be a lot of 
scrutiny on what's that ROI, scrutiny of not only the the sales ROI, but like can we actually get value right away as we're we're looking at this? So, you know, I think those buying committees want to be very certain that the foundation pieces are easy to achieve with some of the realization that, hey, the sales might not be right away, but if we have the foundational pieces, we're at least going to start getting some some margin and return on investment value um, out of it. So, and I think certainly now as we're looking at AI tools, um, you know, hopefully the the ability for um, providers to more quickly identify uh, actually in market folks and then really give them the the content and messaging that they need to understand how we solve your problem at that point in the buying journey should. Um, you know, just make this whole process easier and more effective for for both sides of the house, both the seller and the, the person looking to buy. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Um, I'll do one final question that's my own here. Uh, any yeah. hot take or prediction for 2024 in the B2B sales world? Oh, in the B2B sales world back in 2024. So this, so my hot take is I think this is the year we get back to more in person. Like I think we've seen shows getting bigger i think we've seen probably a lot more of the you know zoom meetings transfer into uh, on site so i think this is the year like we're finally getting back to that that new normal we're probably getting a bit more um in person i think you know as expensive as events can be i think you know there are certainly good opportunity to get the face time that are they're moving the deals and the better prepared we as marketers are to arm our sales folks with the right tools the right experiences to actually make those conversations um, organic, so it's not a sales pitch, but it's an actual experience for them. Um, yeah. There's both kind of social and uh, business. I think the uh, the more effective we're, we're all going to be as marketers and sales folks and buyers at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I love that. I've been I've been feeling that transition. I think more and more, um, and like this could come from like just before the pandemic. I I think I was home for I think it was like ten days in three months when I was like right before the pandemic and I was set to go to Australia for three weeks. Like, yeah. a, like I think a week after they said like, no, like nobody's flying anymore. Yeah. Um, and I was like, there's gotta be a balance between that and nothing. And I, like, I think there's a time and a place for it all. And I, I do agree. I think people are getting a lot smarter about it and they're yep. using things like events. Like you're saying is like, okay, I can, I can spend a lot on one event but I can bring almost every single customer into one spot and knock it yep. all out in one shot. So yes, it might feel like an expensive ticket up front, but when you look at the macro spending on travel and like just the time people yep. commit to like going from place like point A to point B to point C to point D as they go yep. through that, like I think I think you're right. I think it's gonna be like on sites and targeted things where they can do more than just one thing with one customer because yep. that's not scalable either anymore. No, it's not. And I find I feel like the uh, the BDRs and sales teams the most impactful and most effective outreach tends to be um, around those shows. But I think there's also a little bit of uh, <laughs> if you want to go, you need <laughs> like you need it like needed the same thing. You still need to justify the ROI, which gives them a little bit of a little bit more of a, an impetus to do that. Yeah, no, for sure. Oh, cool. Thank you for your time, Paul. Um, yeah, as always, deal. appreciate it. Um, we love you guys as customers. I'm really excited what we're going to accomplish in 2024 together. And um, it's going to be, it's going to be a sweet year, I think.